There have been countless conversations about AI agents since 2023. This topic has exploded across the news and across the tech world, uh, and it's steadily growing uh, even up until now and will keep growing, I believe. But now we're approaching a crucial point, a reality check for AI agents. And by the end of this video, you will uh, get the current state of the union uh, on where AI agents are today and where they might be heading from the business perspective. I will be using CB Insights report on the future of workforce that came out just a few days ago and that gives a very good uh, overview of the market uh, as of right now. But let's start with what are the AI agents and how they're different from the chatbots and uh, content generation tools that uh, you have seen on the market. So AI agents are autonomous software entities that can plan, reason, make decisions and execute those decisions without constant human input. It's a big leap from uh, what we're used to, uh, and because it can do those things, it can tackle complex workflows, you know, make sophisticated decisions, at least you know, in the future, we'll see. Uh, and that's what sets them apart. That's what makes them um, the future of the AI industry. But let's talk a little bit on um, how those ag agents actually work from the inside. It's not going to be way too detailed, but uh, the basic logic is uh, there's a bunch of frameworks. They're all following sort of similar approach uh, to uh, building those agents. And uh, first of all, agents use large language models. Next to large language models, they use various uh, uh, API calls and software tools uh, to execute those tasks that they decided to execute. And they use those language models, uh, open AI language models, for example, in order to reason and make decision and plan and prioritize. So imagine um, an AI agent that is tasked with planning your vacation. It would create a to-do list, it would prioritize the tasks, it would handle everything from booking the flights and scheduling activities uh, and so on. Uh, and again, there's plenty of software frameworks for building those agents and even UI tools for building those agents. The early examples are AutoGPT and Baby AGI, how uh, the ones that they're highlighting over here in the report, but there's plenty more. So that's pretty cool, right? Well, despite all the excitements, there are still significant limitations. Uh, the reality is that fully autonomous AI agents are still in, well, nascent stages. They struggle with complex reasoning, planning, and accurately interacting with external tools or websites. Even some of the most advanced agents like Devin that you uh, can see over here on the chart, uh, they struggle to execute large portion of the tasks without human intervention. So look at this chart. This is basically showing the real world software engineers performance, uh, uh, Devin's performance for, in the software engineering, uh, measured as a percentage of the tasks that it was able to execute on its own, which is 14%, uh, which is kind of not great. Because of that, OpenAI uh, actually uh, considers the technology to be at the chatbot stage. And, uh, you know, it approaches reasoners, but it's not yet there. So even OpenAI and big players admit that it's, uh, you know, it's coming together, but it's not completely there yet. The real problems that happen with them is that they tend to get stuck in endless loops of consideration. They lose context uh, and... Uh, they struggle to deal with large contexts of memory, and that makes them, you know, really unreliable for sophisticated tasks. But let's take a look at the broader AI agent landscape. And by landscape, I mean the uh, actual applications in the industry. So it seems like most of the applications are currently horizontal, meaning that those products that are being built with AI um, uh, agents uh, they are applied across the industries and they're not necessarily uh, industry focused. There are some startups um, that are targeting specific verticals, but most of these companies are developing horizontal agent solutions. And the uh, agent infrastructure space is heating up. Uh, a couple of interesting examples over here. Uh, I mean, length chain obviously is like basics uh, for building the agents. Uh, but if, you, if you're not from the engineering world and you don't know that, that's, that's totally fine. It's just a framework for building uh, agents. Um, and a couple of interesting players over here that they highlighted is this emergence AI, which is a sort of an orchestration agent that is going to be good at making decisions which agent 
to assign task to based on what the task is and what they can do in the best way. And they've raised uh, 100 million, so apparently they're building something important and big, and they wish them the best of luck. And another interesting case is this company called Anon, uh, which is focused on uh, authentication challenges for AI agents. Basically, like if you have an agent that uh, you want to post something on your behalf on LinkedIn, don't do that, by the way. People like people. Uh, and uh, in this case, this agent needs to enter your credential and keep entering them, uh, you know, occasionally. Uh, and they're managing this process and handling this process. But let's switch to the investment space. Uh, investment surge right now is kind of crazy. Uh, and it's, it seems like a very, very uh, big bubble, and a lot of people talked about that. Direct companies like Adept, Imbune, and uh, Cognition AI that uh, raised uh, three-digit numbers in millions uh, for what they're building. Some of these companies haven't even released the product yet. Um, I'm not completely sure exactly how they're pulling it off, but uh, yeah, I guess they can. But if we look at the volume of funding, uh, in 2022, we had like a total of 250 million invested into the space. And now, year to date, we almost have a billion dollars invested already. And the, the key investors over here are Y Combinator, City Ventures, New York Life Ventures, and the big corporate players like Microsoft and Google that are hugely involved uh, in the overall space. So where are those AI agents actually being used? Uh, in customer support, for example, AI agents are uh, already replacing uh, traditional roles. Uh, and there's an example that they give of this Klarna AI, which is a customer support agent, uh, uh, that took over the work of 700 customer uh, service agents just in one month, resulting in a significant cost savings for the company, but also resulting in uh, significant social implications, uh, at least potentially, because all of those people are staying without jobs uh, and uh, I will talk about that uh, at the end of the video because this is something we all have to remember at all times. And uh, if we scroll down a little bit in sales, AI driven SDRs, which is sales development representatives, are automating lead generation and uh, outreach. Although there are still issues with the quality and trustworthiness um, of the uh, content they produce. In software development, uh, that's another area of active development, coding assistants are becoming a standard, but fully autonomous coding agents are still sort of a work in progress. And other emerging areas include cybersecurity, where AI agents can help investigate alerts, uh, and finance, where they can assist in compliance and uh, investment uh, research. The gaming industry is also uh, exploring AI agents, which, uh, well, promises some fascinating developments uh, in the coming future. I believe that the next big industry for AI agents is digital marketing, which is what I'm working on um, uh, with my team. Uh, and uh, there's a huge potential over there for uh, automation of the uh, paid marketing workflows, performance marketing. Uh, let alone uh, the automation of the uh, content creation, which is already happening. Now, let's wrap this up with some final thoughts. While AI agents are still in the early days, admittedly, they have already demonstrated that the approach can work. However, making them truly production ready is another challenge. Many companies are stuck uh, at the prototype stage, struggling with the unpredictable nature of language models. There's no clear best practice for building these agents yet, and many frameworks run into the same issues. Agents getting stuck, losing context, or becoming just basically too expensive for uh, scale up. Trust is another big issue. Uh, users still need to verify the work of AI agents, and not just need, they want to, they don't trust them. And while this will improve as technology matures, it is a significant barrier right now. But what I think is going to be the biggest kind of slowdown of the development of this industry is the resistance to change. Uh, many people are still used to doing things the old way, 
uh, and they want to keep doing things the old way. Uh, and I think this kind of uh, habitual inertia is what will be slowing down the development of this entire industry. And this is not necessarily a bad thing. The industries where AI agents are likely to thrive in the near future are those, I think, uh, that are okay with having something done 80% right, uh, where, you know, 80% is a good enough number for them. This number will, of course, grow, but make no mistake, agents are here to stay. However, they will have a huge social impact. Uh, unfortunate and unavoidable consequence of all this automation is that they're going to displace a lot of jobs, forcing people to adopt and find new opportunities. And uh, I don't think that we're ready as a society for that. There's definitely going to be a significant negative impact, um, at least in the short term, uh, with this change in the workforce. But AI agents are becoming inevitable. Companies are slowly realizing that not adopting them, uh, not adopting this technology puts them at this significant disadvantage. And interestingly, as always, the larger the company is, the slower they are to uh, adopt those technologies, which opens up huge opportunities for smaller and more agile teams. And these teams can leverage AI agents to make disproportionate impacts, disrupting industries and uh, setting new standards. So there you go. This is where we stand uh, with the AI agents revolution right now. And I'm going to be talking about these topics, about AI and about entrepreneurship on this channel uh, more and more. So if you're interested uh, to see how this AI revolution impacts your entrepreneurial journey, please like, subscribe and hit the bell button. Thank you. Bye.